Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers 2016 Circuit Feature Tournament number two. My name is TJ. I am joined by Kriparian. Krip, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. We've got some uh, some invited players today. It's going to be a little bit of a different mix-up than what we've seen on the Onog circuit so far, and uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely exciting. Uh, of course, uh, we're going to be broadcasting over the course of the weekend. Group A today, Group B tomorrow, and of course, the playoffs on Sunday. Um, it is pretty exciting. We have a mix of, like Crip said, invited players, four of them, plus two players that won the last two Opens, and of course, the last two players are the two players that finished the uh, this section with the highest amount of Geico points. I heard so, you were you were given given allowance to brag about your Geico points. Can can we just get this out of the way here so we don't have to you know keep listening <laughs> to it throughout the broadcast? Yeah, there's even more to brag about actually because um, I have Geico points because I finished a uh, top eight um, oh. in one of the opens, and also the player that beat me. Went on to win the Open that that was in. And also, he is the player that's qualified for the Grand Finals at PAX Prime at the end of the year, which is ever Siction. So, um, yeah, the, a, lot, a lot of bragging rights for me to go on here. But uh, also, uh, another thing about ever Siction, his teammate, Astrogation, uh, from New Order Esports, is playing today. He qualified through uh, Geico Points. So, that New Order Esports team really loves this Onog stuff. No, that's good. I mean, uh, it's an opportunity to get into the into a lot of other tournaments, make a name for yourself in Hearthstone, as long as you do reasonably well. Yeah. And, um, I, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see. Oh, a lot of people that I see that seriously a- approach the uh, the scene as, you know, getting into the Hearthstone tournament circuit, on one hand, we have people who are really focused on results, and there we have other people who kind of bring a little bit flavor decks and those guys don't necessarily have to do as well to get like noticed. So yeah. I'm kind of curious which path uh, you know these participants are taking. Yeah, and New Order Esports is kind of you know what this tournament is focused on, uh, getting giving those up and coming players a chance to to make a name for themselves. And uh, the future tournaments, there's going to be five of them throughout the year. We've already seen one of them. They have a six thousand dollar prize pool each. Uh, in order to get to the future tournaments, you have to uh, participate in the opens, which there's ten total opens. And we've been through four of them so far. Each of those opens has a $1,000 prize pool. So uh, it is limited to U.S. only. Uh, but if you are in the U.S. And, and like to play in opens, $1,000 for an open tournament is is incredible. It's uh, by far the highest prize pool uh, for, for any open out there. Um, also, like Astrogation, like we mentioned, he qualified through Geico points. Even if you don't win one of the opens, if you place well, uh, you can get Geico points. Like I have a, I have a few. Um, and... If you get enough Geico points, you can qualify even without winning an Open. So uh, lots of ways to do that. Um, you can head over to geico.onog.gg if you want more information about that. The website's right on the middle of the screen there. Also, mm-hmm. uh, throughout the year, we're doing Alienware PC giveaways. So those are also available on the website. Alienware PCs are pretty sick, Crip. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I did want to mention that um, it, you know Hearthstone's a game that's, that's a very interesting um, when it comes to results, you know, the, the players that consistently do well are the best players, you know. But the players that place like first and like second are also the best players, but they're also the best players who got really lucky. I feel I feel that's kind of how it is. So, you know, to have um, uh, people qualify through these tournaments who just have the most Geico points, which are awarded just on doing well overall, not necessarily winning, uh, I think it's a very nice system to get people uh, involved. Yeah, and actually I made a mistake. We gave away the Alienware PC, I think, last week. Um, okay. And we still have a PC giveaway, but it's a CyberPower PC this time around. Uh, so um, it's still a great PC, and we are uh, giving that away. So you can still uh, head over there uh, onto the website. Same website, I could own OG.gg and enter in to win that. But uh, uh, yeah. Make sure you guys go ahead and do that during the breaks in the day. But let's start talking about that first matchup. Uh, it is going to be Astrogation uh, from Group A, he qualified, like we said, through points. And Dog, who is one of the invited players. And, and it's a little bit of a different setup here. Uh, I think in the past, in the Onog circuit, we've uh, mostly had the, the triple deck, just bring what you want, Conquest. We're doing Conquest with the ban. So there's a lot more strategy involved. Um, you know, when the Conquest format was starting up and uh, a lot of different tournaments had their, their mix 
up on you know how they want to run things, if they want to ban things, how many decks, how many rounds, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I got a chance to talk to a lot of the players during that time period, and it was very divided. You know, some players love conquest and no bans because there's, um, as Strifecore put it, zero practice, zero preparation involved. But other yeah. players really like the ban system because. Um, their preparation does actually translate into results. It, it's, a, it's a very different game when you don't have to worry about one deck. And it becomes a different environment than the latter experience, which is what you see often in the Conquest-only tournaments without bans. Yeah, very true. And uh, we actually have uh, the finals for the future tournaments are best of seven, mm-hmm. uh, so, which means that they still have to uh, ban a deck, but they have to bring five decks. So that's an extra layer if you make it to the finals. Uh, the final day of competition uh, at a future tournament. So, uh, really cool. To, <clears throat> sorry, really cool to see. And we can look at these guys' lineups now. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, Dog has uh, uh, Paladin, Druid, Warlock, plus that Warrior, which it has been banned. And of course, Astrogation has Hunter, Warlock, Warrior, um, which seems like a little bit of a faster lineup. Maybe a Patron Warrior, and that's why he went ahead and banned the Warrior deck from Dog. Could be. Could be. Um, we've seen quite a mix of warrior decks, but going into the first game, you don't really know what you're up against, and you kind of have to play, uh, you know, a bit safe, I believe. So we'll have yeah. to see. Yeah. And, and of course, a dog probably going with a control control style lineup, which he tends to go for a lot. But anyway, the druid druid also tends to be a band that players just kind of throw out there because mm-hmm. uh, nobody really wants to play against druids, and dog saving us the. The uh, the trouble of having to watch Druid versus Druid mirrors, at, and you know at least a few times today. So <clears throat> we are going to jump into game number one of this first game. Uh, so at the end of the day today, we will have the top two players from this group from Group A move on to the playoff stage on Sunday. And uh, so jumping in. All right. Uh, um, the names are fl- flip flopped. There we go. That's that's a little better. We can at least see the board here. Yeah. So it looks like um, I believe I believe the the overlay is correct. So I believe Dog is the one playing the slower Warlock, um, and with the Zombie Chow inclusion, it would suggest that it is Arena Warlock, while uh, his opponent Astrogation is playing more of a Zoo Warlock. The Gormok, yeah. the Impaler is uh, very indicative of the, the Zoo decks that we've seen recently. And um, it's actually been a card that um, I thought would fall out of favor. Uh, you know, Chalky uh, talked quite a lot about the card, how um, it just seems like it's just not as good as Sea Giant. So you can use the card, but you should probably put uh, double Sea Giant in your deck already. And uh, we haven't really seen people doing that, so kind of curious. I, I, and I do agree with him. I think the results have been uh, quite mixed with the card. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is a very um, hit or miss card, as we've seen, especially in Onox. And another play that we're going to see, I believe, later today, uh, Lead Paint also was one of the players that did run the Sea Giant version in his win in the Open last week or a few weeks ago. So uh, cool to see the, those different styles. And now this fifty-fifty uh, is huge. You get that extra minion on the board, and that's a very big deal to protect a knife juggler, and he gets it. Yeah. Plays into Hellfire a little bit, so um, but yeah, you, you can't really play around those types of things. Well, I think it actually forces out the Hellfire is the thing, right? Like if he had to trade the two-two, Dog would probably play the Drake, and seeing as there's no Silence in the hand, that may have actually ended worse for Astrogation. So even though um, the juggle didn't mean that much, it ended up being one more face damage. I think it 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 fully baited out the Hellfire, whereas in the other case, it probably would not have. Yeah, very true. And uh, Dog's just going to go ahead and throw down stuff. Now, Dog's got a pretty decent hand to sort of stabilize towards the, the later part of this game. And he's got Molten Giant, he's got Antique Heal Bot, and he's got Sludge Belcher. Also, only Shadow one Flame. Taunt, only yeah, one only taunt. one taunt. Only one taunt. Um, but he does have a board clear with the Shadow Flame to sort of reset it. <laughs> Ooh. Dog, uh, not too happy about that four plosion. He is able to um, Shadow Flame with Dark Peddler, but um, you know it, it looks pretty good when you just take into consideration the current state of the board. But if you think about it, this is Reno Warlock, and the reason Dog is shaking his head is even though he's board cleared twice, that's about all you got. Yeah, I mean maybe a, a Demon Wrath thrown in there, but Demon Wrath might not even be able to remove yeah, an entire board. Quite from uncommon as well. Yeah, 
Especially because it is against another Warlock, the, the Demon Wrath, even if he does get it, uh, will often just not be very effective. So, yeah, and here we are. I mean, that was a turn six Doctor Boom for Mastrogation. Yeah, and now you, Dog, even though he AOE down the board, Astrogation was just able to sort of reload. Like, he, he just reloaded with a stronger board, so... Dog's just sort of been on the back foot all game, which is something that you expect as a as a control, more control-oriented Warlock player, but eventually you use your AoEs to take back control, and now that he doesn't have any more, it's going to be hard for him to do that. Well, I think he's going to drop the implosion here. It just kind of makes sense. Oh! Hmm. Wait a second. How much can you do here? Uh, if he taps into... No, he wouldn't have enough mana. Actually, yeah, he would. No, he if he tapped into a power warming, he'd still be one off. Oh! And another four! Wow. <laughs> How about this one? Two. Well, that's still where you want it to go. Yeah. And now Astrogation is just going to start pushing in for damage here. And... But Sargo went down to 5 HP, and he's got the Molten Giant and the Heal Bot. Well, he's got Jaraxxus, but I don't know if that's enough. Jaraxxus yeah. might be able to risk stay black. Yeah. I just don't know if you're ever going to get a better Jaraxxus, honestly. Like, you heal for 10 with Jaraxxus. Yeah, you take a lot of damage, but... It's going to be harder to Jaraxxus going forward, is it not? Yeah, but uh, you kind of want Jaraxxus when you already have things on the board to try and make it safer. So maybe he was thinking if he uses his other cards to stabilize this turn. Also, um, Healbot becomes less effective. Not less effective, but harder to use also. Because you can't usually get the full value out of the 8 heal. Ooh, Morkoil is a decent pickup because he can get past this taunt and cycle. But can he do enough to get through? He can Mortal Coil and Draxus if he choose if he so chooses. But he hasn't seen a single like burst card from Astrogation. So he hasn't seen a Charger, either Doom God or Leroy. He hasn't seen like a Power Overwhelming. He's seen an Abusive Sergeant, but that's about it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty rough. I think he's going to have to Doomguard. Yeah. So if he just clears with what he has... Um, yeah, but he needs the Jaraxxus. Yeah. I guess the he's just thing, Jaraxxus then. Yeah, the awkward thing about this is that the Taki Boom has 4 health. If it had 3 health, that turn would be a lot more smooth. Because then he can just either Dark Bomb or trade in the uh, anti kill bot to the Doctor Boom. And now he has to make this weird trade with the Molten Giant and bring it all the way down to one health. Well, there's some opportunity for Dog to stabilize here. If he can just pick up a Taunt Activator, he can get uh, he can get Taunt Health on the Infernal and the Void the Void Caller. And the Void Caller having Taunt is a really big deal. Oh, failed juggled so far. Okay. He does get the clear board. Oh, wow. Wait. That's a second Dark Bomb, isn't it? You can't create a Dark Bomb through any other card in this deck. Is this just Demon Handlock? I guess so. That's a second Zombie Chow, too. Yeah, those are the only two of that we've, Yeah, those are the only two of us that we've seen. Oh, and that discard actually gives a lot of information to Astrogation. Yeah. And that's, actually, it's much worse for Dog, because the Zombie Chow sucks, while a Dark Bomb is actually pretty good. Yeah, but, you know, Astrogation still has to piece together that damage. He picks up a Power of a Woman here. Uh, that's not quite enough. That's uh, six damage total that he has right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Dog's pretty much out of... Well, I guess if it's yeah. not Reno, then he will have... Probably second heal bot somewhere, which could bring him back up. But yeah, What's he probably has more taunts too. I think there's some argument to not play the other egg though. Yeah. 
To play around what? Just the double attack, having your board clear. It's much more annoying if, if, if the egg is there. Yeah. By itself on the next turn. It's one of those minions that does actually survive by itself most of the time. Yeah. Alright, well, four health left. There's the second heal bot, so that ends up being an okay pickup. So it does seem to be just a demon hand lock from Dog. And he's going to be able to create a 6-6 six, six every turn, so he might be able to stabilize enough to get lethal amounts of damage here, despite Astrogation having a pretty ridiculous uh, opening and reload wow. after the AoEs. Does he have lethal? Wow, he actually... He has lethal next turn, yeah. Yeah, he has lethal, so he, he has to start trading. Yeah. But can he... Tr he has to kill the Void Caller, or the 6-2. Did Astrogation just not count? Did he just die? He didn't count. Is that 12, 15, 20, 23? Yeah, it's yeah. Like 23. Yeah, he could have killed the 6-2 to play around it, but I don't know if he'd even be able to get through after that, because Dog would just keep trading in and reloading with a 6-6, so... Wow, that's well, just the strength of the demon handlock there. He might not have to get through is the thing. Like He could just get one of those turns where you get Doomguard PO or just double power overwhelming. Yeah. I think I think there was a, a missed opportunity for one of those, like, you know, 1% to 2% recovery moments that uh, was missed there. Oh, oh, well. You'll get another chance. Yeah, so Dog's going to sneak by with a win there. I don't want to say sneak by because that was... Pretty well played. I thought he used the Elise a little early, but you know that's just what you have to do. That ended right. up being the difference since at one point Astrogation was, you know, two damage off of Lethal. So very well played by Dog. And Astrogation's gonna throw out the Zoo Warlock once again. And this just looks like mid range Paladin. Yeah, I think Dog just brought uh, three control decks. Looked at the uh, at the meta. If he's dropping Druid off every player, as every player is probably bringing Druid, there's very few aggressive decks that can't be controlled, except for the ones with huge combos like Druid. Yeah. That's a great opening for Dog. The only thing he's missing is like a muscle for battle to help fight on the board a little bit more. Now that you've said it, there's roughly 100% chance he'll draw in the next two turns. <laughs> yeah. But other than the monster, it's a really ideal hand. Mm -hmm. I think here you're going to have to get rid of that creeper, because the 1-1s do affect your 1-1s and your divine shields. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it would kind of make buffs somewhat irrelevant for the next turn. Let me yeah, think. all of your minions are low health. This could actually be like a Flood Paladin with the Haunted Creeper. This Haunted Creeper is not usually an inclusion in mid-range. Uh, I think it's pretty good. And it's a great card, just by itself. Well, it just allows you to run a lot of the buffs. Mm -hmm. I, I've played like Egg Paladin, and it's, it's pretty good. And I mean, it's basically the same thing. You put in Creepers, you put in Eggs, and it, you can just run the very powerful Paladin buffs. I mean, yeah. the, main, the main reason why you can't play the Paladin buffs in most cases is because if you're ever behind on the board, they're completely useless. But they're very good cards on their own. 50-50 here can be big. And he loses it. And wow, it is huge. Yeah. That's not a muster, but that might be better. That is better. Yeah. First, because it's only a Blood Emblem on the board. So he'd have to have and activate it this turn forward just to break the Divine Shield and then be able to get through the next turn. Picks up something to play with the Knife Juggler, but... Well, that something's a really good card here. The, yeah. the Voidwalker prevents both attacks. Especially if he hits the Juggle... No. Nope. There you go. But the, um... The Blood and Planting is, is a big deal as well here. Yeah. I mean, I guess it'd be a big deal either way. Because if it hits the Voidwalker, all of a sudden, you can't use Keeper to bring it back up to trade in. But that might give just give him incentive to not use. Having both at 3 health is a little bit awkward. Instead of 1 at 4, 1 at 2, since you're doing damage in increments of 2. I kind of like the Keeper here a little better, I think. Flooding the board here can... 
can cost them all these minions. Big punish with implosion, and nope, not quite. But Sea Giants That's a great still pretty pickup. good. It is, um, it is going like something bad is going to happen to it, at the very least its attack pool. Yeah. But um, at a three three, it's not terrible, and a one eight, I think it's actually better. Yeah. Yep. I think you need to remove that off the board. <laughs> a 1 8 soon becomes a 2 9 with an Argus. And then you realize that you still haven't dealt with anything. Yeah, and Dog's going to be able to coin out a Dr. Boom next turn as well. So. Ooh, a oh, turn implosion. Late. Oh, man. One turn late. See if he can roll four three times in a row. Nope. So two fours and one two is what that actually doesn't really work. so far. Yeah, the Doctor Boom play is so much stronger if you're playing the first one, especially when you're holding uh, answers in hand. Sometimes the Boombots can just kill the opponent's Doctor Boom. Well, I guess Boombots can kill the opponent both Doctor Booms. Actually, the Boombots can just kill the opponent, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Also true. But once again, Dog has a pretty decent answer. In fact, he can I think, just. Go I think there face. is lethal here. If you go all out face and then consecration, and the boombots kill your boombots. Boombots would have to do. 7 damage to the face. Both boombots would have to kill your boombots, and the boombots would go have to go face for 7 damage. Well, it is possible. The face thing wouldn't be that unlikely because it's a 50-50 with just the Doctor Boom. Everything else would yeah. die to the Consecration. Yeah, but uh, having the Boombots die would be the hard part. Yeah. But, you know, still a full board clear, and Zoo just doesn't really have ways to come back on the board, so Dog is in a commanding position and takes game two. This is quite good. I mean, Dog is... is he's running... I mean, he's running mid-range decks, really, right? Like, the Warlock yeah. deck is more of a control deck, but it can act as a mid-range deck. I mean, a lot yeah. of the huge threats come down on turn 3, 4, 5. That's kind, of, that's kind of where he's thinking that, you know, it won't do so well against Druid, but it'll punish a lot of the other decks. And it seems like Zoo is one of those decks that gets punished pretty hard. Yeah, very true. And we still, yeah, I suppose it's just straight up mid-range. Uh, Hunter Creeper is just a good card overall, but that means Dog only has one deck left. Now Druid, I believe, does do quite badly against um, against Zulok. It is a mid-range deck, but it's also a mid-range deck that has a finite amount of damage most of the time, uh, as you kind of lose the board uh, quite frequently in uh, yeah. the mid to late game. But this hand is. Really good, if I had to uh, say so for a dog. It's going to be a turn three Emperor Tharson. Yeah, um, unless he picks up a, uh, a different drop, he might feel like he needs to address the brand, or he might feel like he does... Oh. Well, he can't address the brand. Yeah. yeah, if he had drawn into something else, I was saying, he might have felt the need to address it, but playing one big thing and not touching the board as Druid, or one medium-sized thing and not touching the board isn't that great, because you know the Zoop can always just trade up. And that's exactly what Astrogation would have been able to do, or will be able to do, if this Thor's hand is played, but... Well, no, he has... Just... Astrogation has an answer regardless of what happens here. The, the yeah. Ancient of War was, is not going to make it. This is only other other alternative. What yeah. Hmm. You're not really getting much value out of Emperor Thorsan here. You're just reducing the Ancient of War to 6, and you wouldn't even need to reduce it because you would have to innervate next turn to bring it out anyway. I still think I, the Ancient of War is worse, though. Yeah, it's a lot worse, yeah. I was thinking so, maybe he could, like, wait another turn. Oh, wait against Bran. That is a disaster. Yeah. I mean, this is still probably a disaster. Yeah. You get the double discovery, you're going to lose your Emperor to a one-drop and a Power Realm, mm -hmm. and uh, Bran is sticking. That's bad. And Astrogation just picking up some more burn. I think the absolute best one-drop he could have got was an Abusive Sergeant. It would have pumped it to five attack. 
because of the brand and yeah. develop the board. Yeah. No abusive though. Yeah. Well, dog can clear here with Wrath and Living Roots, but he's going to be out of cards like except for Ancient. I yeah. think I like that. You can also Wrath for one, just take care of the brand. Mm hmm. Oh, goes for the full clear. I think there was... Ah, oh, maybe not. I think killing one minion is actually enough. Because... Your opponent's not gonna Argus one minion. And having another 2-2 two -two on the board isn't the biggest deal when you're holding back an Ancient of War. Yeah. Well, Ancient of War... Development. Yeah, Ancient of War, even if it gets silenced, is still a decent body. I mean, a 5-5. Five -five. Oh. Oh no! I'd go with boom! Boom it! Uh... Well, maybe oh, not. Well. Imkang Im 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 Boss does do quite well against the yeah. uh, Dr. Boom. Yeah. And he still has Dr. Boom for next turn, and... Dog, best draw on his deck after that Dr. Boom has played for many turns in a row is going to be Ancient of, Ancient of Lore. Mm -hmm. Just because he needs to reload, and he's got to innervate to even supplement the reload, so... Alright. Azure Drake's gonna be pretty good also. Yep. So the innervate's pretty good here. I think I'd use it. Yeah. It's only gonna get worse as the as the game goes on. Well just you wait, that Azure Drake is gonna peel up a swipe. You're gonna be one mana short next turn. Yeah. <laughs> and wish you had the the innervate still left. Ooh. Sea Giant's huge. You can play that whole hand. And yeah. and tap, by the way. And because, tap. Yeah, the the Sea Giant essentially costs two because of the Leper Gnome. Ooh. Oh. That doesn't feel like a... a oh. Okay. Planned. All that planned was points. a risk. Bold move. Maybe he's just thinking... Wait, how much damage? Six, nine? Plus six... 15. I mean, this is just... Fight. No, this is a savage roar away from being very unhappy. Yeah. Well, if he removes this, even a savage roar is 8, 9, plus 8, 17. So it's still... Yeah, he'd need it's savage roar. He'd need, like, double savage roar. Yeah. So I think he's he's fine with doing that, but Lothab doesn't help Dog at all. And I don't think he, unless his Boombots do a lot of work, I don't think. No, Boombots boom can do this. Good start. Uh, I, now the I other one has to kill the Flame Imp. Yeah. He's still not dead, but he can't That's attack. The, he can't attack the Lepernome. That's a problem. But can he, he win? The Lepernome, he is dead. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that's you actually lose if you do that, because yeah. the Leprechaun ends up doing four. Yeah, so he goes down to five if he does that. I mean, I don't see how you could possibly win. Ever. Well, I guess you could. No. No, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's done. You could draw. Nope. I was gonna say you could draw swipe next turn. Nope. But the Leprechaun would just kill you. Right. I think if Astrogation plays nothing I and wonder. you top deck an Ancient of Lore to heal, I think that's about it. But that seems quite unlikely that a Zoo deck would play nothing on five mana and two draws. That might actually be impossible, thinking yeah. about it. Unless you draw Sea Giant and. Nope, Sea Giant would still be able to be played. This is actually maximum damage. Because the juggles involved. Mm-hmm. Belcher! But now all Astrogation needs is any minion that costs four or less, or a tap with any minion that 
cost. Oh no no no, because the one imp is gonna die. Okay. So now might be a bit tougher. We both have a lockout any type of board removal. So. Yeah, if Astrogation just doesn't die this turn, he should be good. Actually... Ooh. He has to charge this, right? Be really safe? Yeah, I think so. Well, no, because then you'd lose to a Silence. You wouldn't want that. You have to play it in Taunt mode. But he's already I mean, used one Owl, so and Zudex rarely run two Owls. Very rarely <laughs> run two Owls. Mm-hmm. Well, so, if he plays this in Taunt, Astrogation just has to draw a minion that costs three or less mana, which is, at the very least, two-thirds of the deck at this point. Yeah. Or you can even tap into something that costs one mana. Yeah. A minion that costs one mana, which is a little less likely. He might have a Voidwalker left, or... Uh, he has one Flame Imp left, and he's only played one. He did have an Argent Squire, though. So he might have cut a flame in for an Argent Squire. Or might even have both. So he might even have wasn't, both left. Wasn't the Squire off the Peddler, or am I mistaken? He got a Leopard Gnome and a... Uh... Oh, right. No, you're right. Squire is just in the deck. Yeah. Wow. Oh, look oh, at that. Nice call. And... <laughs> yeah. He can't do it now. And now a Savage... Dog's going to have, have two draws next turn to get a Savage Roar. And Savage Roar might just do it. Wait a second. Nope. Not enough mana. One off. Why do you wow. Oh! No! What are you doing to that Gormok? Ooh! Ancient of Lore. <laughs> so, okay, this is... You have to think about this turn for a bit. Because you have to think about what you can trade into. You can remove everything off the board and take five damage in doing so, except for the Nerubian Egg. Um, you could uh, wall growth first, but then you can't hear a power if you play Ancient of Lore. And I don't, I don't know what you... Need to Lith of this turn. I don't think that's important. Uh, but do you need to hear a power at all? Like, it, does hear power factor into your trades? Yeah. And what would you even be looking for with wild growth? <clears throat> like, would wild growth... Give, could it give you lethal? Swipe. Swipe. Swipe's good. Yeah, I think you'd play swipe over ancient lore. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. But he's running out of time. Looks like he's just going to heal. This is also good. By leaving the taunt up, um, doing efficient trades here. Oh, I'm surprised to see that. I think I would have left up the 5-2. The 5-2 would have to run into the, the slime. Having one health next turn, allowing in a swipe. Get in there and fight, man. Uh, I think he That's just it. wins next turn. Yeah. Yep. Oh no, no he Dog wins this. Not too happy about that. Yeah. yeah. You can feel from a little bit. Dog made some uh, some uh, some really good plays there to play around with the possible outs, and it just so happened those were the exact cards um, that uh, Astrogation was holding. So very yeah. very well played by Dog, but in the end. Astrogation does draw it out, which I think, you know, even though it, it seemed like Dog had a really good chance to win in that final situation, I think if you rewind back three turns, Dog's chance to win was almost zero. Yeah. So he was pretty lucky to get there at all. He needed, uh, uh, like, runner, runner damage, uh, or taunt into damage into heal to be able to even survive, yeah. and he got all of that, so... Uh, I don't think he can be too upset. The thing you're upset about is that that game went on so long and he still ended up losing, but... It just now dogs... Like throw, it's like, you know, you play so well, you get all these opportunities, you get the right cards, but in the end, it's, uh... Nope. <laughs> in the end, you lose to a tapped top deck power warming, and yeah. all of it just comes crashing down. Uh, but I think he made all the right decisions, and... Dog's got a good start in this game. Paladin Shredder innervated out, and he's going to follow that up with a wild growth. So this is looking pretty good for him, and he's just going to smack the face and uh, stop putting uh, more pressure than the hunter. I'm not as confident as you are. I feel like even though Face Hunter has dropped out really hard in the tournament scene for quite some time now, um, it's still pretty good against Druid. Like the moment that Druid falls behind and has to start trading, it's game over. 
Yeah, but that's pretty far. Uh, like a, a, a swipe drawn at any point against Face Hunter almost always ends it. Um, yeah. Or even just like a Druid of the Claw. Druid of the Claw is so hard for Hunters to deal with. It comes out on five, and you always have to worry about another taunt. So, um, but yeah, Face Hunter is dangerous. It's I still think it's a really strong deck, and you can, uh, especially in a tournament environment, if you can peg like what types of players your group is and capitalize on them being greedy with like decks and tech choices, then you can definitely do a lot. But Druid can also race hunters. I mean, you can get in damage early. Face hunters usually aren't going to trade. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Amount. Yeah, you have to get that early damage. Otherwise, you, you're forced into trading. And he is getting it. And then Huffer. That is going to die to a living roots though, but. It's going to die to a living roots, and then a powder treader is just going to be plopped down on the board, and a dog's going to push eight more, or sorry, four more damage. So. Uh, next turn, Dog will have 8. Maximum damage with, with Force of Nature, uh, 14. Mm, snake Trap, that's interesting. Yeah. So Astrogation can, if he... Alright, he's going to Animal Companion instead. Leoc. You can see there's a lot of strategy involved in this game right now. Yeah. Whole tons of it. And now you're at 10. Here's where it gets really sketchy. Yep. I but believe with... Astrogation is going to win with a kill command draw. Because that Haunted Creeper is not going to die this turn. Hmm. I mean, it might. Uh, it sits up for a decent swipe. No. Um. No, no way. Because if you, if he attacks into one, and because you're attacking into something with the pile of children, no matter what. No, you're not. I think you're going face. Yep. Oh, wow. Now that's surprising. I didn't think he'd take out the mad scientist. Kill Command wouldn't have even killed him, so that's a really smart play. Yep. Because the maximum damage he could have done, that's why, I think that's why he took out the Mad Scientist. Mm -hmm. Because if because uh, if he did have, like, bow, like, maximum damage would have been, what, bow plus Kill Command? Like, double Kill Command would have killed him, but you can't really play around that. Yeah. Like, in the worst case scenario, you can play around something that's likely, which would be, like, a three damage plus a five damage. Um, which would be quick shot plus kill command or bow plus kill command. So it's a really smart play by dog. Secret is explosive there. All right. Well, uh, that should just be it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that should do it. <laughs> Here comes misdirection, right? <laughs> yeah. Even that. Yeah. <laughs> misdirection into your face, and then you just die. Yeah. Misdirection would be the only trap that you lose in that situation. Even bear trap, you could just swipe the bear. Uh, if you hit face, and it ends up being bare, so... Uh, that's going to be Dog taking the series 3-1. to one, And I believe that means he's going to move on to the winner's match of this group. Uh, which means he only has to win one more before he secures his spot in the playoffs. Not too bad. Uh, playoffs. But that, was, that was a pretty tough game for him. I mean, as ahead as he was, that game did come down to some crucial decision-making from Dog in the very last few turns. And it was... Uh, you know, a game with a difference of, uh, you know, just a handful of points in HP there. Um, yeah. Pretty crazy one. I'm, I'm curious to see what classes uh, the other players are going to bring to the tournament. Um, you know, more so than, than other tournaments, with, with the ban format, uh, it makes it so uh, there's a lot more that you can do. And I think Dog really took advantage of that. I think his decks are... Um, I would say unusual for tournaments, um, except for the Druid, of course. I mean, Druid yeah. is Druid. Druid does Druid stuff. But yeah. uh, his, his other choices are kind of in line with the Druid, and they're in line with banning your opponent's uh, Druid, really. Yeah. So, good call on that. Everybody's playing Druid these days, and uh, Dog's taking advantage of it. I think things yeah, are going to be uh, looking up for him pretty soon. 
Yeah, we'll see his Warrior deck. Uh, don't know what it is yet. Maybe we'll get to see it uh, later on today or on Sunday in the playoffs. But uh, the next matchup is going to be the other two players in Group A. It's going to be Jab versus Lead Paint. So Jab, another invited player. Lead Paint, uh, one open number four. So the very last open. Um, but before we do that, we are going to have to go to a quick break. Make sure, guys, during the break, you head over to geico.onog.gg. The next open is on April 30th. So if you want to... our pc but a uh, quick break before we jump into the next group a match don't go anywhere guys more one nation of gamers 2016 circuit continues right after this